committing fraud when they issue this warrant of execution. Um, so, uh, and there's several recordings where people have called up the bulk centre and the traffic enforcement centre and asked them all if this went to law, and they go, uh, we're, 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 yes, we are. It's, absolutely not. There's no, sh there's no um, judges, there's no magistrates there, there's no clerks of the justice, it's just a rubber stamping, there you go, that's it, you're done. This is why nobody will sign their warrants of execution. Bear in mind, this is for both council tax and these tickets, and the reason no one signs them, as I said earlier, would be because they'll be liable, and you can actually take them to court for committing fraud. What they do then, is they then send you a threatening letter, we've got a warrant against you. That's a warrant of execution. What that means is they can come and knock on your door, please pay up, that's it. There's none of this pushing past you, breaking into your house. However, this is the thing you have to bear in mind, uh, bailiffs that deal with this and council tax are private bailiffs. They have no power whatsoever. Absolutely none. Um, now a court bailiff, you'd think if this was issued by a court, they did give it to a court bailiff, because a court bailiff does have certain powers. But they don't, they use a private bailiff. And that's because, as I said earlier, they commit fraud for council tax and parking tickets. For council tax, they hire the room app, that I'll start off at the beginning with that, they, uh, the, the court has an agreement with the council that it's too much paperwork for the court to issue all these summonses. So the council issues you the summons. Absolutely unlawful, they're not a court. But well, it looks real, but it's not. Then they hire the court out for the day and they pay the magistrates and the clerk of the justice. Um, so it's a private administrative procedure that goes off, just like with parking tickets, except those magistrates aren't acting under their own, they're acting private terms, so they can do anything you like. One of the things you should understand about them is that every offence, if, if they want to call it that, has to be dealt with singularly, individually. Now, I sat in court and watched the council tax one when they go, oh, we've got 247 uh, thingies here, we'd like an order. They go, yeah, look, bang. Absolutely unlawful. They broke the civil procedure rules. Um, so then they pass it on to a private bailiff. Why a private bailiff? As I mentioned earlier, it's because they're committing fraud. And a, a court bailiff would look at it, it's not signed, not touching it, not going anywhere, that, that's, that, that's going to have me in trouble. This is why they give it to a private bailiff. They like, say, parking tickets and council tax. Now, the only power they have is they can come to your house, they'll usually send you a threat letter first of all, asking you to pay. They can come to your house and if the door's unlocked, they can open it and walk in. So if you are gonna go down this route of challenge and you can counsel tax all them, you need to be aware of what you're gonna have to be ready to deal with. You need to keep your doors and windows locked uh, because if they can walk in. If you're prepared to do that, as I am, what happens then? All right, let's see what happens then. Bailiff letters start arriving. This one's from uh, the 7th, July. Uh, it's Equita, and you'll see. Execu uh, warrant of execution granted against you by the Traffic Enforcement Centre. Well, it's not a court. But of course, General Pu Joe Public goes, oh yeah, must be, total. I may swear from time to time, because I'm quite passionate about this, and if I do, I apologise in advance. Uh, this one is also the same month, but it's uh, two weeks later. Auction notice. They're coming round to auction my property. Yeah, well, they never turned off. <laughs> uh, removal notice. Uh, we're now into August. Removal notice. Now, before I go any further on this, you may be wondering why they never turned up. Well, for a start, I wrote a notice to them telling them if they continued trying to claim on this particular thing, they would be knowingly committing fraud. And if any of you want to come look at these, you'll see the signatures on every single one, apart from three that I've got, are all signed bailiff manager. They don't want liability. Even these know that they're committing fraud. What I simply did, after writing a notice to them, pointing out their fraudulent manner, um, I also issued them a denial of access with a fee schedule. Now, I don't know if you know about denial of access, but if you haven't put a denial of access sign up or sent anyone to anyone, you're not, that everybody has an implied right of access to your property. Once you issue a denial of access, the only people that are allowed to come to your property is the postman and someone coming up asking for directions. So, all these threatening notices, letters, and, um, oh, oh no, warning notice, what we're up to now? Oh, we're in September now. Uh, removal of goods, still in September. Uh, still September. 
uh, just to take formal notice. Uh, penalty charge notice. You, you get, you get, you do get. Oh, a scary one now. Bailiff removal. You will be scared. Final notice. Well, I won't be getting any more then, will I? <laughs> Uh, oh, final demand. Well, again, I'm getting no more now, then. What are we up to there? We're in, uh, still in September the 29th, and, oh, we're into November now. Same old rubbish that we sent earlier. Notice of intent, uh, still in November. Oh, what are we up to? Oh, 15th of December, 24-hour removal notice. Hmm. Now, I did get uh, some delivered on the 23rd, and that was actually designed to upset my holiday. Well, when they came through the door, I laughed the whole day long. Uh, this was the latest one I got. This was the first of this, uh, no, sorry, the tenth of this month, and it's a removal of goods. Now, I did get a, a, a separate letter at one point, uh, which said, our removal team was in your area today, but there was no one home. Now, if ever you've dealt with any of these type of um, la love lacking beings, they are very careful. That type of notice, removal team has been in your area today, should, should be delivered by hand. And it states, we were in your area, but there's no one. The only problem is it was delivered by the postman, because nobody's prepared to step on the property, because it's not the company that I'll take to court for five grand, it's whoever trespasses. Now, we changed our, um, the name on the car, it was in our name, we changed it to the family name. So it was the family name, family, Salon Family Trust. You can have great fun with this. You can register it anywhere you like. You can register it at a PO box. A friend in Nottingham's done exactly that. They put it into it, the actual car is in the trust, and it's in another trust which is actually registered up in uh, Manchester. And of course, we're down in Nottingham. Um, so you've got two trusts to try and get through before you get anywhere. Anyway, I got uh, this one. First letter I got was. Uh, had a bailiff's name on a number, I called him up, asked him a few questions, you know. Um, who's he after? Oh, I'm after. What's it sound like? Oh, Salon Family Trust. Okay. Well, who, who, who did the, who, who committed the offence? Don't know. All right. Who's going to pay? No one. Oh. By the way, has your um, office told you that, you, you, I guess you did an aisle of access with a, a £5,000 fee schedule? No, they haven't. Oh, just for your own, you know, obviously I don't want to cause you any harm or loss. I get a letter a few days later, bailiff manager, he's backed off, I ain't going nowhere near it. This is, all I'm showing you is the power of a denial of access. Just to show you that I'm not joking when I've had a few letters. These are all bailiff letters. I only opened the first one and the rest are all the same. So you deregistered your vehicle? No, you? I didn't deregister it. I simply changed the owner. Where it was in my name, it's now in my name, Family Trust. And you can do that, just, just fill out a, the V5, do that, it's in Family Trust. So, think of it like this now. These are looking, I even said, played by their rules. What person are you looking for? What's it say on the left? Uh, well, who did the effect? I uh, don't know. Who's going to pay? No one. You can see he's going nowhere. Where can he go? How can he take a family trust to court? The answer is he can't. It's always good to have a trust as well, not as well as naming it, have it a trust, a person, private trust, which you need to look into to find out about, but they are very, very powerful. And then when it's put into a separate trust, I don't know if you know much about uh, our, group, our illustrious leader from the past, Tony Blair. He, when he left office, he was worth over a billion pounds. Um, and a lot of people were interested to find out where he got that money. That, I don't know if you also know that Tony Blair was, was a lawyer as well, and he actually dealt with this type of thing, trust type of thing. They could find nothing on him, because everything he has is in a trust, which is in a trust, which is in a trust, and you cannot get past the trust. If anyone writes to you and says, well, you know, your, your family trust, yeah, um, we, want, we want to come and uh, have a word with you. I'm oh, sorry. The trust only meets once a year. Send a, send a message and I'll put, bring it up at the next meeting and we'll, we'll discuss whether we're going to deal with you or not. What are they going to do? There's nothing they can do. Any questions on that before we move on? Where uh, can we find out more about that? About? Family trust. 
<laughs> There's a number of guys I know that are working on templates at the moment as soon as they're available and checked because it's very important that we check first. They will be made available to anyone to use, but in the meantime, you can do your own research into them. Trusting, if you get, can get trust, that is the most strongest defense you will ever have. And if it's a trust in a trust, they might as well wave bye bye. You can put your house in a trust, you can put your property in a trust, and then you can put that in another trust. Mark, you can't say that the OJ and Michael Benicia coming in a few weeks to do a talk are exactly that. Yes, yeah. Uh, you should all attend that one. Excuse me, can you put savings into a trust? Sorry? Can you put, if you've got savings in the bank, you want to keep it in the bank, can you put that into a trust? You can put anything in a trust. Um, I've got a few premium bonds, would I be best putting them in a trust than dealing with premium bonds? I, I can't make your decision for you, that's your choice. That, all I can do is share the information I know. What you, deal with, what you do with that particular thing, that would be your choice. But yes, anything can be put into trust. Um, denial of access, where do you find more of uh, There's one on the site, does it have a fee schedule? I can't remember. If it hasn't, it will have. <laughs> but I'll say you, it should have, yeah. If, if, if there's one on the site, on the front page, if it's not got the fee schedule, because you, know, you can always contact me or I'll be sending John a, a, a copy and he can get one. Well, I've gone back to the penalty notice as regards to parking. Does that also apply to the camera saying your photograph if you go on a bus way? Yes. That's, the one that we got for Family Trust was exactly that. Uh, someone that was using the car doesn't like town decided to drive down a tram track because she knew that was where she wanted to go and um, well snap yeah. and that was the family trust one which was awesome it was very much fun that one. any more before I move on I'll just ask um, do you know anything about I heard a while back that if you could register for place you place you live as, uh, as a church or you can register on the yeah, charity about that. do you know anything about that no, uh, taxes or something yeah. Trust is the way to go. If you get your property in a trust, it is untouchable. But you have to make sure you do it right. And that's what we're all, there's loads looking at it at the moment, all working on it and seeing which, which is the best method to come up with. So I'll, re I'll quickly actually move you, on. Sorry, do you need more than one person in the trust? Yes. Yeah. Ideally, now <laughs> this is the part that's just newly come, this is like new information this week and we're only on Wednesday. Ideally, 15 people. Now, the re now, now don't take this, because this is brand new information. 15 people, because if you ever get taken to court, you have your own jury there. It's a trust situation, you have your own jury, you can dismiss the judge if you want to, if there is a, a jury over there, you can dismiss them, because dismiss them you've got your own jury to deal with your trust. It's nothing to do with them, it's your trust. But having said that, yeah, just a small family trust, four or five members, is, is fine as well. It's just if you're getting deeper into stuff that you, you, you can go down that far. Now these are the, the things I've uh, dealt with. Uh, Vanquist, oh, there's, there's the Equator one, I think, uh, or one of the Equator ones. There's the other Equator one. Um, Virgin, well I won't tell you about them because they're just idiots. This is the one I want to tell you about. This is from Orange Mobiles. Um, Buchanan, Clark and Wells are chasing 255 quid. So I send letter one and letter two. And they respond. Yeah, they responded okay. Letter three. Uh, they responded still. So I build them. Now you notice these stamps and thumbprints and writing all over them. You don't have to worry about that. If it starts off with just use the letters off the side, get your ground with them. Then, when you feel, I want, I want this more secure, I want it m more powerful, that's when you can look at this. Or what this does, it makes you the postmaster. Right, so if, if, um, if you ever went to court, say, say this was your, doc, your letter there, this was what a judge could do. I see nothing of relevance. It could even put it down that way and look in between the lines. No, I see nothing of importance here. Because he's in charge, you see. Doing that makes you in charge, you're the postmaster. You are, postal law is above statute law. A judge dare not mess with postal law. So that's the, in the future, don't worry about it now, just do the letters. One thing I would say, John said, go on the site, get the letters. Most important thing you can do is read the letters, because so many, go there, put their information, send it off, 
and then they'll get a letter back. Like I showed you there, I've got letters back. Now I know that they're never going to give me what we ask for. So, but if you get that and you don't know that, they're going to go, you're going to go, oh, shoo, shoo, I've got this, what to do? The simple answer is, you're, you're going to ask them for a few details, like a signed contract, a signed invoice, signed by both parties, the contract. They sent me an invoice, but it wasn't signed. Yeah, well, they won't do. <laughs> Again, why not? Um, they're never going to give you what you ask for, because it doesn't exist. But let me just finish. I do tend to get sidetracked. And again, any short questions? Yeah, but I'll try not to sidetrack side you too much. So, I, I build them, and I got another letter, and another letter, and another letter. Oh, wait a minute. What's happened here then? This has changed companies. It's gone from Buchanan, Clark and Wells to Geoffrey Parker Vaughan Solicitors. So it's the solicitors dealing with now. That's got to be scary now then, because it can't be as easy to get rid of them, can it? Uh, well, letter one, letter two, oh, I've got a letter from them. what does it say? This is solicitors being in mind. I'll miss out the thank you and all that stuff. Uh, the papers relating to this matter are currently with our client, uh, Debt Recovery Agents, BCWPLC, and they're <coughs> referring your letter to them. I've only sent them one letter, and they're already referring my letter to them. So, uh, please contact our client directly if you can call from website. The thing to remember, once you start the letter routine, whatever, whoever you start it with, you continue it with that thing. What they'll do is they'll send different people to deal with you. Ignore whoever they send, you always keep to who you start with. So, letter three went to them, and I, oh, another letter from them. So this is letter, this one, oh, again. We wrote to you on the 21st of April, previous March Copy attached, just in case I lost it, or it didn't make it to me. To explain that we are currently not instructed in this matter. Well, wait a minute, this is solicitors. I must be doing something wrong because these solicitors have just said, no, we don't want to touch it. Or I'm doing something right. Well, one of the things that people ask, or one of the common things that people say actually is, well, you borrowed the money, you should pay it back. Well, that would be true if you had actually borrowed the money. John called it briefly, that, oh, I'll just go through this, then it changes to NCO, another debt collector, blah, blah, blah. Then it changes to Scott Call, letter, 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 um, Scott Call, final letter. That was sent on the 23rd of September. Nobody's contacted me since on this. Right. Why don't you owe them anything? You go to a bank. I want to borrow £10,000. So they'll, go, they'll get an agreement out. So they go, yeah, sure, fill that out. You go, blah, blah, blah. It's got £10,000 on it in writing, got £10,000 in numbers, da, 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 the usual stuff. And then you sign it. At that point, when you sign that agreement, it changes from a loan agreement to a promissory note. It is worth that amount on there. Now, this is why they use an agreement and not a contract. If they used a contract, they would have to tell you when you sign that, you're actually creating £10,000. This is why you're not borrowing anything, because you actually create it. Now, and if you want to test this, by all means do. Go to your bank. If you've had a loan for three, four months, ask to see the original agreement. I guarantee you they'll have lost it, misplaced it, can't find it. They haven't done any of that. Sold They've sold it. They've sold it on to other banks. And so, they sold your £10,000, probably for more. In some suggest a lot more, I haven't seen the evidence of that, so I'm just leaving it at 10000 for the time being. You, they sold it for £10,000, so they've got the £10,000 that you created, they then lend it to you. That's good of them. They've lent you your £10,000. Then they want you to pay it back, plus interest. Well, John covered the interest side of things earlier, but it was your money in the first place. This is why we ask for a contract, because if it's a contract, they've got to say, well, yeah, you just created a promissory note now that we're going to sell on and, uh, you know, con you out of the, that the, you pretend you actually uh, didn't create it, pretending we lent it yet. If it, it was all fair and they told you that, you'd go, no, 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 no. I tell, if I've just created £10,000, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll give you £100 for monetizing it uh, and, and give me the 9900 Well, that's fair, because that's what really happens. But they don't tell you that. Right. Do, you, do you understand how or what we ask for? I don't. Right. I'm totally baffled by that, to be honest. <laughs>
Right, the first thing on here is this first paragraph. Very important, read that. It basically covers protection from harassment, the particular sections and that type of thing. What you're saying is, uh, I want to deal with this, this matter in writing only. Now, most debt collection companies <coughs> only have a license to contact you by phone or writing. Now, they'll definitely put on their thing, an agent will call, it will be calling such and such a date. Nine times out of ten, they won't. If they do, what are you going to do? Yeah, and I'm, I'm for a BCW group. You've got a debt. Yeah, have I? Yeah, 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 look, see it. No, it's doing me, mate. That's it. There's nothing to fear from them. But <coughs> if you ever get that, and you, you fear that you're not knowledgeable enough that to deal with them, then I'll have access straight off to them. They won't be a step on your property. I did this with the TV licensing. If you go on my um, YouTube channel, you can see the, the clips of what happened. I dealt with the census people, the uh, voters registered people, type TV, TV licensing, all there. I can tell you the TV licensing because it was so quick. This is when I was having fun, and then I got bored, so I decided to stop it. Come to the door, always with a camera. Always have a camera with you. It shits them up no end. <laughs> it really does. So, at the door, and he's like this. You got a problem? No. What are you filming there? Well, you see that notice in the window? It's a notice. Video and order recorded at all time. Oh, oh, right, yeah. Well, um, 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 uh, anyway, I'm from TV licensing. Oh, good for you. Have you got a TV? What's it got to do with you? Oh, nothing, really. You're going to be like that, aren't you? 